For me personally, <laughs> I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. We can do shit on our. We can do shit by ourselves. Right, so. right. That's uh-huh. a weird point of view. And then I was like, "Fuck it, I'm saying something." Yeah. <laughs> good, good. I think every relationship should start off with a friendship. Okay. You know, respect my boundaries mm-hmm. and hold me to a high value because I'm your woman. Yeah, like I think in the right scenario and with the right, right person, anything is manageable and you can make it work. My parents were very career driven. I would say that um, I wouldn't, I would never say never. Get your education, buy yourself a car, get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. What's up fam? Welcome everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, episode 15. Um, man, we're 15 in, bro. Yeah, who would have thought? It's, uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're a little small project. We're still going. Um, episode 15, we're really excited for this one. This one's going to be uh, completely different than the ones that we've ran before. Um, we personally, I think Victor as well can agree with this, but I've gotten a lot of comments and uh, DMs. Uh, a lot of women, you know, contacting us saying, hey, get more girls on the podcast, right. get more girls, get a female perspective. And I was like, yeah, I agree. Like, we've got a lot of males so far. <clears throat> and, you know, and obviously nothing against the males. It's, But in this world, mm-hmm. males aren't the only, you know, sex, gender. There's also women. So we want to bring more women on the podcast and just so we can better understand each other mm-hmm. and learn you know, from you guys and get perspective and, you know, and, and, and understand your, your guys' perspectives on things. Oh, you exactly. Don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We don't make it known. Yeah. And right. so on that note, um, we have Kaylee and we have Nina. Right. Welcome girls. Appreciate Hi. you guys coming. Thank yes. you for having yes. us. Of course. Of course. Shout out to, to <laughs> Cleveland. And uh, Virgin Islands, right? Is that where Virgin you, Islands, East Coast? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. shout out two one six. This is Cleveland. This is for you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> is Connecticut uh, considered Midwest? No, that's more no, East. No, East Coast. You're Midwest because you're Ohio, obviously. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. Um, so, well, what, what state is better, Cleveland or Connecticut? As, well, Cleveland's not a state. Oh, it's my bad city. <laughs> yeah, no. What Ohio city? My bad. Yeah. Or are you talking about like Ohio? Yeah, like Ohio, Connecticut. What's the vibe? Oh, they're like? completely different. Have you yeah. guys been to each other's states to actually know? Or? I've been to Connecticut before. I've been to like every East Coast state, I think, because they're all so close together. Mm-hmm. But um, just road trips. Have you ever just... been to Ohio? I haven't yet. There's not really much reason to visit Ohio, so okay. a lot of people have never. I would been. disagree. There's so much Ohio. Like <clears throat> I've heard great things about Ohio. A lot of athletes come out of Ohio. A lot of great. Okay, everything. it is yeah. like a. It's a very like heavy football farming state mm-hmm. for sure. We also invented the sport of football. Don't forget. Right, right. Jim Did you really, Thorpe. or is this just Jim no, Thorpe? Right. Okay, okay. Out in Canton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. So okay. Ohio has a rich lesson. history. Yeah. Um, hey, Dave Chappelle is from Ohio. He's. From from Dayton, yeah. That's right. That's um, right. I don't there think he grew up in Dayton. I think he just lives there now. But no, no, no. He did grow up there. Oh, for real? Yeah, I've seen some of his stuff. No, nah, I think about. I think he said he grew up in like um, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I, I think there's been a mixture, but yeah. I think I did hear him well, say that. Well, it's still the Midwest. Yeah. It's all the same. It's cornfields and not much going on. But no, we did invent football. We got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland too. Who's Shout that? out. Cedar Point, America's Rock and Roller Coast. There you okay. go. Whatever that is. Shout yep. out to That's the like the bit. It's America's Rock and Roller I'm Coast. I'm not from they Ohio. Have the, I don't they know. They have the tallest, the largest, and the fastest roller coasters out of any amusement park in the I United States. Go. Is that the oh, one where they do that slingshot up in the air? You know what y'all I'm talking yep. about? Yeah, they we do. have that. Oh, I've shit. done the one that, like, it puts you in, like, it. I've ridden some crazy <laughs> rides there and i've done some of the slingshot stuff yeah. that they have at the park too so it sounds like well, you know that place you guys got crazy. it going on just you don't go don't go between the months of um like october to like Humid. april because it's Freezing. really depressing and everything's gray and you'll never want to go back okay. <laughs> so, Dang, go. so if you go during that time it'll be like end of base, you'll hate it like end of like Actually, end of basketball Why? season of the to the beginning of football season. Yeah. I was like, prime time to go. Because of the weather? And you've got sports. like all three sports teams. Cleveland's right. a really big sports city. You've got the Cavs, the Guardians, formerly the Windians, mm-hmm. and the Browns. So, What do you think about that, by the way? The Cleveland uh, Indians having to change their name due to cancel culture. What's What are your thoughts since you're from there? I mean... Washington I feel had to like do it too. It's just like... 
I don't really see. I mean, like, I like. I actually prefer the Guardians. I mean, the Windians. There's a lot. Let me like better catchphrases and like Chief Wahoo is like a big sensitive point for a lot of people. I worked at sports bars the whole time I, like, was an adult living in Cleveland um, as a bartender, and so I, there was a lot of like gripey old men that would be like, "Oh my God, they're erasing history. They're taking mm -hmm. away Chief Wahoo." Mm -hmm. It's really not that big of a deal. And also, the Guardians is a much more like historical tribute to Cleveland because one of the main bridges that goes into our downtown area on Detroit, uh, Detroit Ave, it has this. Um, these like two guardians of the city mm -hmm. that are on these giant pillars going onto the bridge. So it kind of like I think it I think it gives a little bit more homage to that's fair. That's the fair. City yeah. that way. So I have it represents um, the city a little more exactly. More yeah, and it's not like offending people. <laughs> <laughs> well, so on that on that note, um, I've actually been to Cleveland, and I um. I've got a buddy out there who he actually gave me the history. He was kind of clowning California because we're woke and cancel culture and he doesn't really fuck with that right. And he gave me the history though of uh, Cleveland Indians where it was actually to honor Indians where it wasn't intended to make fun of them or use it as like a derogatory term. It was really just, hey, you guys were here and you know, you, we wanna honor you with this name. So it just, it sucks that it was taken out of context and you know people were saying like that's offensive and i can see where they're coming from but if you look at the context and what the original yeah. intention was it was actually an homage you what's know, your saying, what's your ethnicity i'm fully latino okay so Honduras. like if there was just like a team called like the latinos but it was like all like white people playing on it would you feel weird no what that Why? wouldn't offend you no, no, okay. I don't. What's, well, well I, I, why would why would it, in your opinion, it sounds like it would offend you if there was an all Latino team and they're No, called but or, like, just like, it's like calling a team. Well, it's not, I don't think it's like cool to just like strange. make it a team name. Like there's so many yeah. other names you could well, go well, with. Well, you that. have to, again, if we it's go like to context, like back when it started, right? Like yeah. it was probably. Maybe. I mean, Jim Thorpe was Native American and he's one of Ohio's best athletes in history. There you go. Um, there's, yeah, and you're right, as historically context, to be historically contextual, the Cleveland Indians were like a largely Native American team at a certain point. Um, but I think the Chief Wahoo character is like, that's pretty, that's pretty racist. Like there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But I don't, um, I don't know who that is. Who, who, Chief who, who, Wahoo, it's like the, the red character the with the feather in his yeah. head that has the big nose and he's like, yeah. So what's, what's racist or what's wrong about what Those are all like very like racist ways to depict um, a Native American person. And also even the term Indian to a lot of people now, maybe not when the team name was made, but especially now, um, just like the word Indian to refer as someone who's Native I can American, see that. it's yeah. offensive and it's so, so you agree then with Washington as well, changing their football team, the whole logo and the name? Cause I wish they would have kept it the Washington football team. That was okay. that was a badass yeah, name. Like, no, eh. Commanders is not Sounds it. Sounds like I'm, a hockey team to me. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. Feeling that. Or like a cheer squad. But, you know, they, they also had the um, the Native American on the helmet there, the, the red skin, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. That obviously a lot of people didn't like that as well, and I think, they changed it. Yeah, I think because they kind of, like, go hand in hand, like, to your point, how, mm -hmm. like, Indians isn't necessarily racist in itself, and that case the character was mm -hmm. so they had to change them both and in this yeah. case i think it was the name that was more offensive because right, if you skins. look at the logo of the redskins it actually of uh, formerly the redskins mm -hmm. it looked really similar to like the blackhawks logo mm -hmm. but that's not offensive because they're right and i never I, I never really understood how offensive that word was until uh, i saw a movie um and they referred to a native american as a hey redskin like and i could see how they took offense to that mm -hmm. where it's like oh shit yeah, yeah. I, I think I think slur. context is very important for not just these situations, but every situation. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, again, and when when my buddy who's from Cleveland, from Ohio, and he was actually defending that name, it was like, oh, okay, so you don't feel that way, and you actually know the history behind it. Where I didn't really care yeah. that much, but just hearing that, I was like, ah, I see why that was done yeah. in the beginning. And well, Cleveland you know. was like it was very, very Native American. Um, I don't know, especially that. like before it was like developed or like established as a state. Mm -hmm. um, there were several um, Native American tribes living in that area, and our county, the county that Cleveland's in, is the Cuyahoga County. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, which, the whole nation was. I mean, yeah, that's that's a Native American, but that's a Native American word is Cuyahoga County. But it's yeah, there was a lot of tribes living. That's dope though yeah. to hear like the history of of your city and all that, because obviously I don't know, I've never been. But to hear all this makes me like interested to go and 
But if there was if there was a baseball team called the Latinos and it's all white people, that would be weird. I wouldn't it would be, just be it would be, I be offended, though. but yeah. it would be weird and funny. Like what? What's the? What are you guys trying to do here? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, They're trying to represent the culture. Um. Well, one thing, Kaylee, we specifically wanted you here because uh, our last part, no, our second to last, <laughs> second to last, second yeah. last podcast. We had, uh, we had a young man, a uh, priest, mm-hmm. man, and what a presence that he had. And, um, <laughs> no, he was, his name is Priest. Yeah, his name oh. is priest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's his, <laughs> his real name. His actual name yeah. is Priest, and um, he was great. He had a lot of great energy. He's young, smart kid. He actually impressed me a lot because initially, and I, I told him this, and I was like, initially I thought from looking just at his Instagram and what he sent me, I thought this kid was like, you know, kind of like a, maybe like a clout chaser. Like he just says things to, we all know those people, right? Mm-hmm. And then I met did him. Did he have a Supreme or a bait backpack? He did not. He did not. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. So far. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would. Yeah, I would have thought that he would, but he didn't surprisingly. And what, as the conversation developed, I was like, oh, I see where you're coming from. I get to better understand He's smart for where he's at, you know, so shout out to 18 Priest. years old, 18 yeah, he, years old. I thought exactly. he had a good mindset or he has a good head on his shoulder. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So anyways, you commented on his post. Mm-hmm. He said, um, what did he say? <laughs> oh, the post was. <laughs> that well, post made it into LA the group growth. chat. That's yeah. why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, could you bring your mic closer, actually? Yeah, that's too far. Yeah, so yeah. the post you're talking about, that one made it into the girls' group chat. Oh, <laughs> so did it? we had did a little it? discourse about it before the comment oh, actually shit. came about. Yeah. So, so, so they voted you to freaking drop the comment? It wasn't what? really <laughs> a vote. It was more of just like a, oh, my God, what is this? And like, a, ew, like, that's uh-huh. a weird point of view. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm saying something. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. So, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, talk, let's, let's talk, talk about, about that because that, yeah, yeah. that's where this good. whole thing initiated. Um, for anybody that hasn't seen it, um, we released... Yeah, we released a reel where... Alley Girls, that's to, what it's called. To summarize it, uh, Priest says that he does not like LA girls. He prefers European women over really Latinas, American girls, cultures. Latinas, etc. The reason for that is because he thinks that European women are more pure than uh, LA girls and, and everybody else in the world. So mm-hmm. we, we <clears throat> challenged that. We let him obviously express his point of view. And so that's where Kaylee came in with her comment and mm-hmm. got a little personal when after his, uh, breath. vape breath. <laughs> and, no, I didn't uh, think, I didn't say vape breath. I, I yeah, think you yeah, did. You, I'm pretty yeah, sure you did. You, did. you yeah. called him something about vape. Breath. I said you look like you work counter at a vape store. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> some shit like that. I, I thought, think yeah, there's no, no the vape breath. I think it was more personal on our, on our end. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. So he works at a vape you store. You called him a grown ass man. He's 18. <laughs> Which yes. I didn't know. Yeah. I should have. I should have done my research. I assumed okay. that because he was on your yeah, podcast yeah. that he age. that he was going to be more around like our ages, and yeah. so that is why I said, "Okay, why are you grown and you have braces?" I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. That's still fucked. You're up. still <laughs> on your parents' health insurance, and you got yeah. braces. Go go off, King. I mean, sure. but so, so, so talk I about take it. that one back. <laughs> but. Um, so yeah, what yeah. what so bo- what think, triggered you about that? I think it was like the conversation about like the body count for mm-hmm. me. I mean, Nina also oh, yeah. saw it and had a reaction to it. Uh-huh. Um, but for me, it was just I didn't appreciate. I think that any time, I think a mature man, and to disagree with him as well, I think a mature man, if he was to be married to someone and then like found out his girl's body count, mm-hmm. like that shouldn't even matter at that, at that point. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I just don't think that any, like, mature, healthy, and, like, well-grounded relationship, that would even be a factor. Mm-hmm. So we we actually agree with you. Did mm-hmm. you see the full podcast? Probably not. Not yet. I didn't watch the whole not thing. Not yet. Not yet. So, so if we, you, went into deta- we went into that. Yeah. If, like, you, if you end up watching it, so <clears throat> we actually share that perspective of, like, like not to get corny or anything, but, but love. Like, mm-hmm. if you end up falling in love with someone... Yeah, what does it matter? Mm Because the truth is like, and, you know, maybe some men don't want to admit or whatever, but men sometimes have a larger body count than a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, it's It's that whole double standard standard thing. And it's like, okay, well, so, so my, my personal perspective, I remember you kind of agreeing, correct me if I'm wrong, but my thing was like, like what you said, like when you love somebody, it's like, okay, well, hey, you have your flaws, I've got my flaws. We're in love. As long as you're loyal to me, you give me everything to me now. 
I can't control the past. And the past now, is, is done. Post comment. Now that I know that he's eighteen, like it makes whole, sense to you. The braces makes sense. Make sense. <laughs> the point of view makes sense. Right. The fact that he Which, might have never even he's never he maybe he's never even been in love for real. Like mm. I mean, at Fair eighteen, point. I don't That's know if point. I could say I'd ever been in like true love for real. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. Which which I shared with him where I was like I, I remember being eighteen, nineteen and having that same perspective where it was like oh like obviously I, I wanted a, a woman that was a virgin at that time. But as I got older, I realized that all that stuff doesn't matter. You know, as long as you truly love somebody and you guys are in love with each other and there's loyalty there, that's what truly matters. If right. you don't mind me asking, yeah. why did you want, even at 18, why did you prefer someone who is a virgin? Was it because... It was it was the immature mindset of back then. You know, like when you're in high school, you're kind of like... But it was because it made her more pure or was it just because like you kind of wanted to like take someone's virginity? Like what was like, I think it was a little bit of ego, a oh, little okay. bit of ego of uh, being that first person. And also I've taken um, a couple of virginities in my day. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like a trophy in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, for me, it was that. And also like being 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 able to say, like, oh, yeah, I was that I was the first one, like. You know, mm-hmm. bragging rights. Type what, 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 of thing. First what, what, like. what is uh, what is uh, Ray J say? I hit it first. That song. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Yeah, back then. Yeah. Uh, what did? Uh, Only problem is I'm rich. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm I know about. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Our our boy Clifton said that uh, virgins uh, became too much work for him, where it was just too much to deal with. Where like I'm assuming like trying to teach them stuff, and it was just too much. Mm-hmm. But did you mm-hmm. feel that since you said you've taken a few yourself is would you agree with that? Or are you? Oh, my God. Are you still looking well, for that? Or? Well, look, to, oh, to, no. No, to, no. To say something, one of my cousins who was a female, um, you know, I sent I sent her that reel and she was laughing and she goes, look, if a man body count is less than five, she just put the little trash can symbol because like, he's either he's a tra- liar or he gets no bitches and either, let's talk about it. Let's either talk way is bad <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so why does uh just out of curiosity not saying i'm here to like oppose that but why does a man with a, a body count less than five in this scenario why is that trash i wouldn't say it's necessarily trash it's just like kind of strange if you're a grown man and it's I mean no shame like maybe it's for religious purposes or maybe something Mm -hmm. happened to him and you know maybe he's traumatized or something I don't know not my business but Mm -hmm. it is a bit strange usually men do typically have higher body counts I I would I agree yeah say the ones with higher body counts usually know how to get better head too so they're not scared too. Yeah, like they're not scared. <laughs> they know how to eat. <laughs> they're not they yeah, scared. Yeah, like a little bit more experience under the belt. I feel like when like you, I feel like when um when you're like taking someone's virginity or even just like doing anything with someone who has less experience than you, like mm-hmm. you're kind of driving the car, and like sometimes that's not what you're trying to do. Right. Sometimes you want to be a pillow princess. That makes <laughs> sense. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. So you, it's fair to say you, neither of you would prefer like a man that has. Uh, either a virgin or not that many bodies. I it's, mean, I mean, would you have me. the patience for it? I guess you. he's not for me. Got okay. it. For me personally, <laughs> I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter to you. Yeah. Okay. okay. What What matters to you? Um, if you don't mind me being asking, being respected and you know treated the way I deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really all that matters. Okay, so as long as he's treating you well, and, and like if their morals are, you know on like the same path as mine mm-hmm. um i think that's yeah that's, it's about respect for you is yeah. that's really what it's about which is good what do you feel like um as a woman i'm sure every woman has her own perspective but what do you feel like you deserve like when you say if i'm given what i deserve what do you feel like you deserve from a man like i guess um loyalty like Don't be liking other girls' pictures. Don't be, you know, messaging people, deleting that. Respect, like he said. You know, just, like, respect, (coughs) yeah. Don't do something that you don't want. Don't be breaking my boundaries. Like, you know, respect my boundaries Mm -hmm. and hold me to a high value because I'm your woman. Like, I represent you. Exactly. You know? How's, uh, I I guess, to 
go to what we talked about before. You wanted to, I think both of you wanted to maybe talk about L.A. men. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to maybe segue into that, because I have a question, but the I think. divas. Well, we let, we, yeah, <laughs> so let divas. me ask you about that. Well, obviously, you being from Cleveland growing up there, I believe you went to college there as well. I went to college in um, New Orleans, mm. and then I went to, I transferred, and I also went to school in um Athens, Ohio. Oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pour me up another one, big dog. <laughs> Por favor. I think I got you. <laughs> <laughs> we got, the, we got um, the Blanco there. Um, but obviously, going from the Midwest, the South, coming to L.A., the West, what, what what's the difference that you see there in men? Like, is it is it a big culture difference? Okay, so there's two ways I can frame this. Let me start with the Cleveland perspective. Mm -hmm. When I go home now, Mm -hmm. because when I lived in Cleveland before I moved to L.A., I kind of knew I was coming here. I didn't really take my relationships very seriously. Mm -hmm. I knew, like, it was going to be temporary. And, like, if you're not, unless you're coming to L.A. with me, it's not going to happen. So I kind of just, like, I that's good. You had that like boundary. For yeah, like I knew that already. <laughs> and so like I kind of already had my set on. I had already had my mind in the position of, you know, no one in Cleveland, no one that my husband's not living in Ohio. So mm-hmm. like whatever, I just kind of disregarded. I just disregarded like I think I disregarded um, the game a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> my last like year or so there. And then when I moved to L.A., um, obviously I've been here for a couple of years now. And when I go back home, I'm like, damn, Damn, what was I what was I so blind to? Like the men in Cleveland are fine. They are fine <laughs> as fuck. The problem is they all drive for Amazon and pay for the blue check. Uh, that's oh. that's the part. Okay. Not so it's money. like that. Like they're all like it's a very like it's a blue collar city. Mm-hmm. Um um it's a very union heavy city. So okay. I mean like it's more of a working town there. I think out like in LA and especially Hollywood, it's like very showbiz. It's a little bit more glitz and glamour. Mm-hmm. Um and even the way that people are born here are raised. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got people in L.A. that are from all over. Right. Um, and so, like, it kind of feels like it's more competitive in that way, mm-hmm. which is nice as far as, like, if you're looking for, like, a goal-oriented person. Right, right. Um, but then on the other, like, on the flip side of that, so, like, the L.A. perspective is, like, okay, so now I'm in L.A. I know what guys in Cleveland are like. And it feels like the guys that I've talked to that – um are, are from, from here, here mm-hmm. the ones that are from here, they, it's almost like they have a chip on their shoulder. Like they haven't like, mm-hmm. cause I mean, can you guys agree that like things in LA, they almost just seem fake. Like things will happen in front of your eyes and they're like, this isn't real. This has like, to be fake. <laughs> so, like on the way over here, seeing that dead body, right? Oh my God. I was <laughs> like, there's no way this is happening right now. Like, yeah. This is so crazy. Um, <clears throat> so I think in that way, like when you're talking, when you come from one background, like me coming from Cleveland and you're talking to somebody that's only seen LA and only knows this like, Facadic almost mm-hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. Um, their perspective's a little bit different. And so they're like maybe not as grounded, maybe not as like hardworking. Some of them have like a chip on their shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, and like it's it's not all of them, but you know. What, it's uh, just kind of like a generalization that I've right. noticed. I have a question for you. What's wrong with like being in like an Amazon driver? Oh, nothing's wrong with it. It's just the Amazon driver paired with the I pay for my blue check. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Well, I'm sorry. Are, are what, you are you saying? Oh, what, what does that mean? I pay yeah, for yeah, that's check. what I was gonna. Ask. What, do you, yeah. what do you mean by that? I'm not like following. you can get you can pay to be verified on Instagram and on oh, Twitter. Oh, okay. I get you. I get you. The like blue the, check pr- on the prior. So okay, so this is let me say verified. they're hard. They're hardworking. They are. They look the, good. They put that they're certified. But their priorities are just a little off. Like uh, I think I in you. my brain, when I was living in Ohio, my whole priority was like get your education, buy yourself a car, get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. That was that was my vision. It was never and to so, stay in there. So when people no, and I love Ohio dearly, and I love going back there, but I can't. No. There's no, there's so many. That's a co- very common story. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I get you know, California, mean, especially the the weather. You know, you guys, you guys actually get to experience all the seasons. We don't. I'm kind of jealous of that. I wish we like, had until you the experience snow? right I'm until sure. you yeah. experience yeah. all the seasons. <laughs> yeah, it gets yeah. Super cold. Connecticut, sorry. it gets pretty cold. Yeah. yeah. Hell no, I'd rather be in an island chilling. Relaxing. What are the guys Fun. in the islands and on the East Coast like compared to here? Um, are they respectful? Are they? Well, well what's that well, vibe like? Maybe, maybe not. She's not with one. Honestly, of them. so I lived, uh, I lived in Connecticut till I was thirteen. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really like I was like in childish, short-term relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, 
wasn't anything special uh-huh. whatsoever. Um, Caribbean, it's a bit like, how can I phrase this? Well, if if you if you live there, you know, like the men there. This is more of a generalization, mm-hmm. but in my personal experience, I feel like the men there aren't as uh, faithful to their partners. Mm. Is there a lot of a lot of activities going on there? Yeah, like I like a, yeah, yeah, I just I a lot think. Of <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what it is exactly. It's um, like coconut water. But I, <laughs> do you think maybe it's because like it's a more transient place? Like more people go there to travel. That like things just fun. feel like more like less um, permanent and like less like you're trying to like found like build a foundation with it's, something. It's probably the culture because it's more like come and go there. You know, honestly, I I couldn't tell you guys what it is, but in my experience, yeah, a lot of and a lot of people would definitely agree. Like Caribbean men are just um a lot of them are not faithful it's probably the culture it's probably they grew up in that marley had kids with seven women (laughs) (laughs) who did bob marley bob marley yeah it's probably as a kid as a young boy you probably grew up seeing men oh okay i see dad with i see so it's probably the The norm yeah yeah Yeah. Um, do you prefer that's obviously not your preference right um well I'll or just maybe. start off by saying I love my man now. He's um, Lebanese and Jordanian. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Rubin. Shout out, Rubin. <laughs> I love him. I wouldn't want anyone else. Um, so I don't really know about all that. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. So well, what was it about your, your boyfriend that attracted you of him? Like, what was that first spark? Or um, I've known him for a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been, you know, good friends. We started off as friends. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really what it was. I think I think every relationship should start off with a friendship. Okay. Mm. Good. I agree. Otherwise, it's going to go downhill. Right. If the friendship isn't good, the relationship ain't going to be Yeah, solid. like there's no connection if there's no You friendship. feel people just jump into a relationship without knowing the person? For sure. Especially, like, with our age, like... Well, I'm t- I'm 24, so <laughs> in my experience, I feel like it's uh, backwards. Yeah, they hook up like first I and then think get together. Um, I feel like well, I feel like a a while a long time ago, like people used to get married at this age and mm-hmm. start having kids young. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I think nowadays people just uh, and you know everyone has their own whatever they want to do. It's it's not my business, mm-hmm. but I just feel like hookup culture is more prevalent nowadays than what it was back then or maybe it wasn't talked about i don't know what do you think it is though do you think music has a big influence on that or is it just the Mm, um maybe yeah actually i think because i look is it drake's fault yeah (laughs) (laughs) fuck that i mean he contributes to the problem but i think uh, drake gets no bitches it's um, (laughs) (laughs) i'm starting that campaign drake is a lesbian woman (laughs) (laughs) and i stand on that No, but, um, there you go. yeah, I think it's beyond him, honestly. I feel like it's more of, like, an agenda push. Mm-hmm. They want people to, like, you know, not have the same morals we had back then when it came to, like, sticking to one person mm-hmm. and having th- those, like, strong family values. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I, I look back at it, like, even in the 90s, you know, there was a lot of... Uh, women that were getting pregnant and being left alone and stuff like that. And I look mm-hmm. at it today and it's, I don't know if it's just that I'm older and I'm seeing it now and where before I didn't notice right. it. Yeah. Uh, but I do see obviously the, the culture right now is like, you know, what so I do backwards. see more is more women being open about it, which I, I think back then they weren't too vocal about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it, for me, that's what I'm seeing more today where it's like women are really just, being out there like like men, you know, yeah. and they're being real about it. Where before they were kind of like hesitant and quiet about it. Whereas like today it's like, yeah, like women think the same way as men too. I think part of that also is that like even like 40 years ago, like um, which isn't that long ago. That's like when my mom was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, like women weren't, were still not allowed to do certain things without a husband. Right. So like now that, I mean, now that we, we're in 2024 now and now that women have the capacity the to do yeah. a lot more on their own. Um, and that's not saying they didn't have the capacity before, but like 
legal ability mm-hmm. to do a lot more on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, now we don't really need a man to be married to us. Like we have, we can do shit on our, we can do shit by ourselves. Right, so. right. I, d- I definitely agree. What, what do you think about um, women thinking just that, like not needing a man? Um, what What's your point of view on that? Like, is that? I am a child of like several branches of divorce. I think every single person in my family has either gotten a divorce or um, something like that. So I think in that case, the reason for that, I mean, we're Catholic, but also, so we don't believe in divorce, but also, (laughs) so they'll stretch it out to the end, to the bitter end. But um, I think also just like when, like, back maybe 40 years ago, like people would get married and they felt like pressured to like stay in their relationship. Like there wasn't really an escape, even if the person was toxic or even if like they just grew up a little bit and they don't align well as a life partner with that person anymore. do it for the kids. It was, yeah. Thank you mom and dad for sticking two together because we don't know how. My siblings. She knows all the lyrics. (laughs) Well, no, (laughs) listen, that's actually um, my sister. We were out we were out, all of my siblings and I, um, out at a bar not too long ago, and that song came on, and like everyone's dancing, having a good time, everyone's drunk. What and song my, is that? It's yeah. like I got it, but I it's don't. It's Hey Y'all. Um, by hey Cameron. Outcast. Oh, yeah. Outcast. Yeah, yeah it's Outcast. Okay, okay. I'll see. Yeah. I'll see Cameron. So yeah, so that <laughs> we met him by the way. That song. That's awesome. Yeah. That song came yeah. on in the bar, and my sister. Who my siblings pair all my siblings' parents are together. I'm the only bastard child in my family. So bastard my sister child. So we like <laughs> that they, term is that, so strong. That lyric, oh my god, my favorite insult to give people is you bastard ass bitch, because I am that, so I can say that as much as I want. The first time I heard that was like Game of Thrones. I was like, what the fuck are they talk about bastard? Love Game yeah. of Thrones, so, by the way. Um, yeah, great I still show, haven't show. seen it. Yeah, We're in the bar and that lyric comes on in this song, and my sister looks at me, she goes, Not yours though. <laughs> <laughs> funny because I was like, damn, they really did it. But I think like back during that time, there was a lot more pressure to stick with your spouse and not get a divorce and right. try to make it work for the kids or, you know, for whatever, whatever pressure. Or that the you woman felt. just didn't know how oh, to be yeah. alone at that exactly. time. Exactly. Like there was, a, I think that's why like a lot of guys, they like have like this animosity towards like child support or alimony. But these things are in place because of the way that the financial system is set up to um, prevent women from getting ahead. Like these are why these, they're like kind of like, um, like affirmative action type deal, mm. like things, like but I mean, not with race, but with the like with Money. gender and economic equality. Because mm. if you think about it, like a, like maybe not forty years ago, but back in like the nineteen fifties, when a woman wasn't allowed to get her own bank account, she wasn't allowed to buy her own house, she or wasn't speak. allowed to own her own property, she wasn't allowed to rent a property with other women because it would be considered a brothel. So mm. there's these laws. I didn't lo- even know that. Yeah, those and those laws are still in place. Like in Louisiana and New Orleans, there can't be like actual sorority houses because it's considered a brothel. No way. There can't be like more than like five women living in a house. Yeah. That's it's crazy. considered a brothel. It reminds me of that show oh we're, we're watching. So I think uh, like Warriors. during, oh, I you think, I think during, you know, that time when like all those laws were preventing us to, from doing certain things, that's also why the law is that if you, okay, if you got a divorce, if for whatever reason the marriage didn't work out, now this guy Because you've taken the position of being his wife, which in society means you're going to stay home, take care of his household, take care of his children, because you've like signed on for that job. Now that that job is over, he still needs to pay you because you never trained for anything else. You never got the opportunity to go to college. You never got the opportunity to get real work experience. So who's going to hire you now Mm -hmm. that you're like... 10 years down the road and a divorced marriage, like you can't start all over. So that so was why, like that's why those laws were created. And I, I think that they're still relevant today, maybe not to the same degree, but they're still relevant. So you feel like it is fair to, you know, child support like 50, 50 when there's a divorce, you think that is fair? That's not how it works. How does it work? Um, well, I just said two different things, but for a divorce, 50, 50, that's usually how it works for finances. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's fair? Like, Unless they, you sign a prenup. Um, I think right. it's great that uh, having a prenup is an option, mm-hmm. um, but I think that having like the 50-50 split otherwise, like I think if two people got into a marriage and they knew that they had careers that were both successful, they probably would sign a prenup. Mm. Um, otherwise, then yeah, that's why that protection is there is if that woman isn't pursuing a career and if she's taking care of the household or whatever, then that that's what that's for. I have a it's question a topic. on that. Yeah, I have a question on that. Now, let's just say, obviously... Uh, they get married, relationship, 20 years pass by. But the woman is the reason that the 
that the marriage didn't work out. She was unfaithful or had or did something. Do you still believe she deserves 50% of everything? Well, that's why you go to court for it. And a judge decides. Mm -hmm. And, and lawyers it usually mitigate always that. works in the woman's favor. Right. But Unless you have actual proof and uh, stuff like that. But my, my take on that, bro, is, and this is probably, I, th I don't think a lot of men will like hearing this, but I do think it's somewhat fair because a woman, you know, especially if they have kids, they have to give up so much. Like if it's if the yeah, man she just is, nailed it right there the careers and right all that. exactly if they, if they have two careers she's probably got to let her career go mm -hmm. take care of the baby so it's um as much as it might be a tough pill to swallow it's a woman does give a lot of her life away and dedicates a lot of her life to this right. man and to the family so not only 50 that but the at kid, the end of the day yeah the kids spend a lot of time with with the mother as well so me personally I would want my kid. I wouldn't be doing it more for the mother, but for the kid and knowing that the kid's going to be in a, in a good position. Yeah. Good home, good yeah. everything. I mean, I got to see this, like, firsthand when I was a kid. So, like, I know what my parents went through and, like, their lives changed drastically mm -hmm. over the course of my childhood. They had me when they were 19. So, like, they were just kids. Oh, wow. So, like, things change a lot from the time that you're, like, nine. Right. Like, so for you're sure. 19 when you have a baby. 18 years later, like, a lot changes in those 18 years. Your financial right. status, your family status. They both got remarried, had other kids, other families. So, like, a lot changes in that time. And so, like, to have, I don't know, like, protections in place just to, like, make sure. And at the end of the day, it's, like, just to make, like, with child support especially, it's, like, those kids got to be taken care of some way or another. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, on that note, you guys, um, I think you guys brought up wanting to talk about the gender pay gap. Um, I think it's a good segue. Nina, what are your thoughts on it, if any, on the gender pay gap? Women getting paid less than men usually? Honestly, uh, I don't really know much about that. Okay. Okay. Well, fair so, enough. So, like, I think women only make like seventy to eighty cents for every dollar a man makes. But when I said the when I said gender economic gap, I meant more like, um, like in relate, like for instance, like in relationships. Like, how do you think like finances should be balanced oh, in a relationship? Good topic. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. You you go first. Um, Ladies first. <laughs> I mean, circling kind of back to what we talked about before, like a woman has to give up a lot of her life. You know, her body changes when she starts having children like her you know dreams change because you know she has children to attend to so i think like the man should be taking taking care of like Being you know the, the finances yeah okay. he should be the provider you know the leader um I mean, like, I grew up, like, my mom being the breadwinner, and, uh... Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, my dad just being, like, super entitled, because mm -hmm. my mom, like, was the one making all the money. And, you know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So it was... The man know, should be right. the provider, you know? Is that the gender role you're hoping to play, where you can be the one taking care of kids and your man? Yeah, when, um, well, I mean, like... So when I get married and I start having children, I definitely have dreams of my own still that I sure. want to uh, accomplish. But um, as and I and I, you know, I want to make my own money. Uh, but at the same time, I don't really want to spend like I don't want to be the main Provide. Provider. Like I want mm -hmm. my husband to like be going up to your husband, be like, "Hey, that. I'm gonna take your ass out," instead of it being your husband. Hey, I'm gonna take you out. On yeah. A date. Are you okay with like um, you mentioned like still having your goals and you know things you want to accomplish? Are you okay with like that never happening where your man just does it all and he takes he fully takes care of you? You have babies. And I mean, if I have uh. If, if I'm in a marriage where my man is taking care of everything, I feel like that would uh, help me to accomplish to my dreams To be able to do anyways. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. that would be like a facilitator time. of that. Yeah. I, um, more time freedom. But, you know, family is also a very beautiful thing. And, you know, if some things don't work out the way I wanted to before I had kids, you know, like it is what it is. Everything happens for a reason. Do you, you guys as men consider that? Like if I was to have kids, like do you guys think about like how much your lives could change or is it kind of like almost like minimal? I'll go first. Shit. Because uh, like when women think about like having kids, it's like, okay, I'm going to have to take this much time off working. I'm not right. going to be able to do this. Well, I'm you, not going to well, be I able to do Nina that. Said it. If you have a C-section, mm -hmm. add oh six boy. months to that. Yeah, right. Well, I, think, I think Nina well, look, said it best though. Like, it, like the one major difference about like babies is that you actually, women physically go through a change, which 
we don't. We just right. get to look at that and oh, okay, this is what's happening, and oh, all that's yeah. happening in there. But yeah, not just that breastfeeding. Like there's so much. Yeah. Mm. Just, and, uh, on that note, what I was gonna say is, um, I'm experiencing that with well, my eldest sister. She just mm. had a baby, and I'm seeing that transformation and the work that's behind that. That I don't think I would consider back then. Where I'm like, oh shit, like I kind of, in a sense, feel for her. Where I'm like trying to assist and try to help so she could have time for herself because. Not only that, but <clears throat> mental. It's like it's uh, for your own mental health. Like, you know, babies throw tantrums. And if you're the woman that get, like trying to calm them down, waking yes. up. And, uh, so, like, me seeing that and, and experiencing that now is like, oh, shit. Like, I got to look out for my sister's mental health and make sure she's good. You know, so if that means taking my niece for a freaking walk and her little bike or things like that, I'm all for it. You know, like. This actually happened the other day where it's like, hey, sis, like I, I got I got the niece. What do you want to eat? Like, yeah, I'm going to treat you for dinner. It's kind of like a thankless job. Like, beer. you don't get, like, those hours logged, and it's right. a lot of work. And that's mm. on top of already working a full-time yeah. job. So, from, you know, experiencing Your that. Your sister and, is a superwoman. Right. So, yeah. experience, <laughs> experiencing that and seeing that for firsthand, which I didn't see before, it definitely, you know, my, my salute to women. You Like, you guys play a big role. Not only holding it down in, in the kitchen and work, but also being a mother and a provider for your child. Like, that's so what, what do you mean? Th- what do you think of women um, that don't want that gender role? Does that what, what do you guys think of that? What do you that, mean? Like, would you say like like the tri- like the role you described, for example, where mm-hmm. you want a man to be the main provider? So what are your thoughts on women that like they want to be the main provider and maybe the. They prefer the man to be the stay-at-home dad. Just curious what your thoughts are on that. Um, I mean, I feel like that doesn't usually happen, but, I mean, If that's it works, it works. Yeah, like, if it floats their boat, it floats their boat. It's not mine, but, you know. I think there's a Netflix show on that, right, where it's like the, the, the wife was a successful artist and the dad was a stay-at-home, uh, stay-at-home dad. Mm. Like, even watching, I don't know if you know what show I'm talking about, but. Watching that show, I was like, oh, shit, this is different. Like, I don't... I How'd don't. you feel watching that and yeah, seeing a man in that weird. role? It felt weird, you know? Like, I felt like he didn't really have a say-so in the household because it's like, you don't you don't bring nothing to the table. So you don't you think that the person that makes the most amount of money gets the most say-so? No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm going based on that show. Like, oh, that's what that, that show? show? Yeah, like... Would you ever guy. be comfortable being a stay-at-home dad? Like, say you had, <laughs> like, this person. boss-ass, like, lawyer <laughs> bitch. She popped out your baby and she was like, here, I gotta go back to work. Nah, like, what, how would you feel about that? I, I, personally, I wouldn't be okay with it because I, I, I grew up... But you're so nurturing and, like... No, you are, like... Like, could all credit to Victor for, like, taking care of business and, like, being able to take care of the women in his life like you would be well, a great look, dad it's, bec- it's because he's a, he's a super he'd be a super dad i grew up with nothing but women in the household i have nothing but sisters i have a little sister i have you know a, a niece now so i've seen that side and that's where I'm, I'm not saying i would be the one doing everything but if i could contribute just a little bit to you give just, them more time you just want to contribute a little bit just a little bit that, you know here at the office i ain't changing no diapers <laughs> i ain't changing no diapers what oh my god to this day terrible. to this day i've only changed one diaper he will with his kids yeah with my own kids probably like at that point i have yeah to. you gotta get in right. that ass <laughs> <laughs> right but um I no i think i think i uh me personally i will my pride is too big like i want to be that provider for my woman i'm not saying that I don't want her to work if she wants to, if she chooses to work by all means, but I want to be that main person where it's like, Hey babe, like let's go out to dinner, you know, for me. Is that a bird? That's yeah. A, there's, a crow. there's crows. We were informed earlier. There's this crows. They just hit the, yeah. <laughs> I don't think be that careful. crow liked what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you better change a diaper. Shit. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm coming for you. Kaylee, what are your thoughts on like, uh, I mean, what you're describing, what you described earlier, Nina sounds like very, you know, traditional kind of roles. Uh, you you in the same boat as that, or you just op- um, open to whatever? Both of my parents were very career driven. I would say that um, I wouldn't. I would never say never. Mm-hmm. So like, if I, I couldn't sit up here and say like I would never want to be the breadwinner, like I would never be okay with like my man being like a stay at home dad. Like I think in the right scenario and with the right right person, anything is manageable and you can make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, but both of my parents are very career driven. Like my dad was the provider um, on his side of the family, like him and my stepmom. My stepmom still works full time, um, but my dad makes more money. And so he like 
he does like the overtime and the double time. And like if someone needed to have, if someone needed to take off work to take a kid to a doctor's appointment, it was probably going to have to be my stepmom taking off work. On the flip side of that, in my mother and my stepdad's relationship, I would say that they were pretty even the most of the time, um, with me anyway. Um, but like when my little siblings were born, I was I definitely saw more of that burden fall on my mom. Luckily for her, she had already been working so long in her firm that she was able to like establish this deal with them where you know, she could take time away for her family and they would still be considering her. Like she's a shout out to my mom. She's a partner at her firm, but nice. she, she out. like what, was what able of her firm. Yeah. And, but she was one of the first women to do it. Like part of what she told me, because I had asked her several times during her career because I had a sister who passed away. Mm-hmm. And okay, so that. Uh, thank you, but it's okay. Um, so, and so when all of that was happening, my mom kind of like had this revelation of like, oh, I do, I really just want to spend more time with my kids. And up until that point, she was very career focused. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so at that point, she was like, I do want to spend like more time with my kids and her firm was able to do that. And so when she was like considering to like continue like reapplying for partner of her firm, she kept asking me like, is it like, what do you think I should do? And I was like, mom, I think that like you've been working for this for 20 years. Like this is something that you should go for regardless. And her concern was that no one in her firm that had taken time away to have a family and take care of their kids, no woman ever that did that came back, got considered for partner. Yeah. Mm. And so when she was able to come back and do that, that was a big accomplishment for wow. her. Congrats and so her. like, and if I was in that position, like, yeah, if I was in a position where I loved my job, I was good at what I did. I would try to do everything in my power to be able to have both, to be able to have a family and be, mm-hmm. you know, a very successful like woman. Nice. And if that meant that my man had to take home, <laughs> stay home and take care of my <laughs> kids, then like, that's what you're doing. If, it works, if you're it works, okay with that, dream. like, yeah, yeah yeah, and like it's not like I don't think I think that like um, a lot of this like breadwinner talk, like how you said like you have no say. Mm-hmm. I think in a lot of relationships, it does become this like weird power dynamic mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, who has more say? It's whoever's like bringing right. home the paycheck. Like it doesn't need to be like that. If you have mutual respect mm-hmm. and like appreciation for what the person that you love is doing, mm-hmm. yeah. Like if it's, it's more the man staying money. home, if it's right. for the man staying home, or if it's the woman staying home, whoever's staying home, as long as the person who's working has respect that like they're also working, they're also doing a very important job. Yeah, like that's facts. Then it's then it's all. Because a relationship is more than money. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, whoever makes the most money gets to be the head of the household. Like, if it was just about money, I guess no poor people would have any, like, partners, like. You know, it has to go sure. deeper than that. You oh, know, my love. God. And the homeless people on Fig, they are, like, <laughs> all buddied up in the... They're getting down. <laughs> in the um, sleeping bags. They get question, down. question for you, girls. This is something that... No um, shame in the game. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of my friends about, but what are your thoughts on women who choose a career over having babies where work is all they know, it's the most important thing, there's no time to have a kid... Just curious, what are your perspectives on that? Is that, do you think that's a waste of like womanhood? Like since women are, no, no? not okay. at all. I think if they're passionate about what they're, you know, doing, I think that that's awesome. That's good for them. You know, not everybody wants to have kids. Not everybody really like. You know, wants to be married either. Um, That's fair. I think there's are. too many women having kids that shouldn't. Right. For like sure. Some of y'all For need to. Sure. St- <laughs> some of y'all need to go to the abortion some of y'all need clinic. To close like, your legs. Yeah. No, well, not even get that far. Just close your legs, right? Or be or. No, shit sex. happens, and like I the mean, pre- there's a lot of let's let's be honest, like there's a lot of scenarios where a guy <laughs> says he's gonna pull out or is wearing a condom or whatever. Shit breaks, they don't say anything. He like nuts in her without even asking. Like this uh-huh. happens a lot, it, it so it's not always the woman's fault people. for getting yeah. pregnant. But I the, mean, yeah. you the, the option is always <laughs> there to have an abortion, and if yeah. you're not ready to take care of a kid, it's time to be honest with yourself and right, if you can up. really handle that. Straight up, yeah, way too many people. What's way, that? Way what's that saying? Um, play. Play funny games, win win funny prizes, some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you you guys are for abortion. I mean, yep. I think I think that people need to be responsible when they're having babies and children. You know, there's a lot of children right now that are just like the system really failed them, and um, oh, like you know, being in. Um, Foster, foster care. care. Yeah, my mind was blanking. But, yeah. you know, being in foster care, a lot of a lot of kids are, you know, sexually abused and it's like kind of sweeped under the rug. There's a lot of 
you know, children that mm-hmm. just in foster care that go missing. Yeah, the um, government only cares about you until problem. you're actually born, and then they don't give a fuck anymore. So. On that question, I don't want to jump topics, but obviously we're getting into this whole, like, uh, sexually abused and all that, but obviously the whole shit that's going down right now with, like, Diddy and these artists, like, it's wild. that shit that's it's coming wild. out right now, like, obviously we were just talking about, like, Justin Bieber, there was a video of him being, like, 15 years old at... With Did you see the Quiet that. on Set documentary? Nah, I, I heard about it, but I haven't I seen it. See that. Yeah, that's about like the kids that I were in just not that. just Nickelodeon. I mean, it, it's heavily focused on Nickelodeon, but they touch on. Um, oh, it they makes sense now. I'm looking at memes that people are saying like Nickelodeon and shit now. Okay, yeah, they sense. they touch a little bit on like well, d- on Disney too. Like some of the people that got caught up mm-hmm. doing nasty stuff to kids at mm-hmm. Nickelodeon, they w- also worked for Disney or also worked for these other networks. Do you guys feel that 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 industry, that's what they're they're about. Like, if you want to actually have some type of success, you have to do some shit, like, sh- shady I shit like that. I think Hollywood in general. For sure. Mm-hmm. Hollywood is definitely going down the drain right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It's even, long overdue. Even recently, I was talking with a friend who produces music, and he wants me to create a mixtape, which I'm all for, because, you know, I get in my, like, little, like, poetic moods, Her. and I'll write, I'll write down some verses in my <laughs> notes app. You know, there's some fire <laughs> in there. So I was like... Okay, well, you know, like I'd be down to do this. And mm-hmm. so then he started making a track list for me, like helping me like develop like what the track list should be and um, like creating like song titles and like kind of like positioning myself as like if I was to create something like that, like what kind of artist I would want to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to make the first song, Bust It Open. Which I think just doesn't describe my personality at all. Definitely but it's definitely not. telling of like what is selling in the industry. Because right. this this person Sorry, this person that suggested this, like, they're not an idiot. Like, they work in the industry. They know what they're talking about. But, like, the fact that that was the suggestion, I'm just (laughs) like, okay, so this is very telling as to what people are buying, what people are listening to, like, Mm -hmm. where the industry is going. Were you shocked to hear that? I mean, yeah, because, well, I was shocked, number one, because I thought this person, like, knew me relatively well. He associated that with you. And so I was like, first of all, Mm -hmm. that's not my persona. I would be putting on a total mask if I was to create a song like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, like, it just, like I said, it just, like, was, you're kinda, like... You're kind of seeing the business aspect yeah, of the way they think. Yeah, I was just think. like, well, yeah, like, I mean, like, I feel like, yeah, this probably would be a good song or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, that's but not it, me. it ain't true. Yeah, no, yeah. and I don't think it's a lot of people. I think a lot of people are forced into, like, kind of a character they're role based on what the industry wants. They're talking about certain yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, paid- Meek Mill even talked about it. People are paid extra to talk mm-hmm. about certain things. Or like to not drugs, talk about certain or things. Or you know, things that steer away from, like, marriage and more towards, like, being, you to know. To push an agenda, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all. Well, that's what ads are, yeah. Yeah. It's all an agenda push. Yeah, well, talking about Meek Mill, he ain't looking too good right now. He <laughs> <laughs> no diddy. No diddy. No diddy. <laughs> that's the new diddy. word right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, man, because Meek, uh, he's got some hard-ass songs, but. Dream Chaser was his best album, in my opinion. Looks like something else that was hard, also, he dealt with. <laughs> Imagine making. Or he had to sacrifice a lot to get such, that album yeah, out. Yeah, such great art while in the For midst sure. of. Mm-hmm. That's what they talked about in that Quiet on Set documentary oh, yeah, too. So it's so like honor. the height of Drake Bell's fame mm-hmm. is when he was being sexually abused. That's so the guy from uh, maybe Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. Yeah. maybe that was his escape. You know, maybe like going through all that pain and suffering. Like maybe that acting was the only time that he could be someone else and deliver do, do you feel that that maybe that's why as they get older they go into like these uh drugs and all he that he talked shit. about that actually because he was there's caught a, he was one. caught in ohio actually like fucking with an underage girl mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah mm-hmm. wow. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. there's there's that. this kid right uh, orlando brown i think that's his name yeah he was, he was what, also la- disney star and he, now he's like a drug addict yeah. there's a lot of disney yeah stars well that. so the people have been saying like check on orlando brown because like i mean like not because Drake Bell is a white man and where everyone's like, oh, my God, Drake. Mm -hmm. And he was sexually abused and that's why he's crazy. But it's like, okay, well, now are we going to look at these other stars that we've kind of like cast to the side because they fell off the wagon? And now we're going to like we're not going to pay attention to them and maybe question if something had happened to them. And high key Orlando Brown, even though he sounds crazy, some of the shit he's been saying has been like it's coming out. It's it's on point. Oh, maybe he's not as crazy as it just sounded. Well, I think there's a reason behind that. Like sometimes um. 
I think people need to like Kanye West. Sometimes people yes. need to pretend like they're crazy so people that their and lives and their family isn't threatened oh. and they can say, you know, what's going on. So it's really like a defense on. on their end. And Kanye's yeah. been talking about Diddy. He's been trying to talk about Diddy. Yeah. He's been he telling paparazzi. Too. He's been 50, telling paparazzi like don't make yeah. you don't want to talk about Diddy though for years now. So there's this kid, this boxer, uh, Ryan Garcia. That he's been going on mm-hmm. some like outrageous rants. Because they Have brought him, him to Bohemian Grove, I think, which is like. You so know, do you feel that he's that speaking facts as well? Oh, like he, he definitely is. And you know even about that? If he sounds, yeah. Mm-hmm. And even if he sounds, you know, a bit crazy sometimes, mm-hmm. I think like sometimes people just like play that crazy persona because their life is their Real life danger. and their family's life, like his kids, mm-hmm. his wife, they're being threatened behind closed doors and. They will fucking kill you. Like, it's not a joke. Straight up. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, they have an agenda to keep. And and I feel like that's why, personally, Diddy's house was raided. I don't think it's mostly to arrest him or charge him. I think it's to try to hide some evidence because there's some like, bigger shit. His kids were detained, too. Like, you yeah, know, his older a, son. He was on a flight, I think, and to go on vacation with his daughters. And it was just his son and his, his sons and his staff that were mm-hmm. at the residence when they raided. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was, like... They don't think they found anything. I think it's they, I mean, they said they well, found. We don't know they yet. had they, found, they yeah. had enough evidence though to rate them, right. which shows there is something, something there. like you know ch- child trafficking is. The, the, you, you have to have yeah. The feds right. are not going to come and raid you like that unless they have some type of evidence and his or proof. Sons, of course, yeah. His sons were. Uh, I just think it's a bigger picture. Ab- yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I someone, think it's a lot. I think phone. it's a lot deeper than like mm-hmm. what we think it is because in terms of like trying to uncover like also there's like a huge there's a huge conspiracy about like how all of hollywood has herpes because of diddy <laughs> and like diddy and the way it's no, looking straight it's up. probably I sounding straight right. up, like I like it. usher got it from diddy rihanna got it from diddy uh-huh. and then rihanna gave it to, to, chris, brown. to chris brown and chris jay-z's brown got and jay-z's <laughs> got it and Shit. kim kardashian has it yeah. because she fucked usher maybe who knows but Shit. um but yeah, no, it's definitely way deeper than we thought. I'll think it is. And I think I've heard from people in the industry mm-hmm. that when everything comes out, it's going to be so much worse than R. Kelly. It's so that's that's what <laughs> has me holding my breath is because I'm like, what we know already, oh, like yeah. this so is going to get really, really bad. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I don't think, I think the same way that R. Kelly did, I think right now he thinks he has enough money to bury this and I don't think it's going to happen. Well, he tried to well, hush it up with that first arrested, victim, right? His whoever... Like, you've noticed that all the, like, big stars that something probably happened to or did happen to, they've been quiet so far. All these yeah. big names yeah. that we've name-dropped, no Hanks. one has said... No one has said any... None of those people have said anything yet. They're playing because defense with Oprah their lawyers. Winfrey, because Ellen because DeGeneres. when he... Tri- because he's going to have to keep throwing money at this issue and throwing money at this issue and throwing money at this issue mm. until he's out. And yeah. then someone really big is going to come along and say, no, this actually happened, and he's not going to have any more money to throw at the problem. But did you I guys got, see his mugshot? Diddy's mugshot? That was not him. What mugshot? Like, I haven't seen a mugshot. Like like a, they arrested him? He hasn't like been arrested. A, I think they... It, maybe it was maybe not recently. Maybe it was yeah. AI then or something. Well, look, man, probably. Yeah. I, I've never been a fan of Diddy like that, just because of the whole Tupac situation. Yeah, and he had, he had a play on that as Kill well. Him. Have you guys seen the um, TikTok where it's like a guy coming into a bodega and he's like, "You see, they got your man." They got your man on sex assault charges. <laughs> that was your boy. Yeah, and like, it's this, that. like, it's, um, they, I saw a tweet this week that had that captioned and it was like Tupac seeing Biggie in the afterlife. Uh, uh, <laughs> I that. No, there's a lot of memes for sure popping off right now that are pretty hilarious that we're, we've been watching. His, uh, his neighbor also, did you guys see oh, that Oh, I video? saw that. No, wh- That's pretty. I saw you that. Haven't seen yeah, that. What would happen there? Uh, there's a video, um, caught by, I think like TMZ of Diddy's neighbor and his neighbor is driving away. Way, but as he takes off, he's saying like, like he's been tired of like Diddy having. He's parties. seen yeah parties, and mm-hmm. he's seen Diddy bring in so many minors to uh-huh. his house that it's like yo. Like, Could that be his kids throwing parties though? That's, that's a good, good well, question. Like, I mean, um, but the you kids know what are mean? minors though. They They're say like though 20, his 21, kids are 20. the ones luring those girls in. That's uh. why they're named in the. Th- that's, so they're that's affiliated. Oh. It's like a yeah. team work. And you know what's even funnier is there's a club in LA, like a very like popular club. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, the, what's the club? 
PH Day Club Penthouse. Okay. They're having him host on Sunday, and it's like, bro, he's I went to going. his Halloween party this. Hey, hey, hey. I went to Halloween his Halloween party this year at Highlight Room, what? and where he yeah. showed up just as Batman. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, and that was. Did that he have was, a good Bruce Wayne voice? <laughs> I mean, I didn't hear his voice. I oh, was, I you was weren't that close. I was, was popping like a bottle, baby. Were, were, of <laughs> Sorry, of course. Of no, course. but I saw it and I was like, "What the hell is going on?" I actually didn't know what was going on. I just saw some guy in this group dressed as Batman, and then later on Instagram, I saw it was like Diddy's Diddy, yeah. thing, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> well, no, that, no, that's what it was." No, I uh, mean, crazy shit, Papa? the crowd. Yeah, the crowd was really weird. The crowd of girls. It was like all USC models. Like, mm. I was all college girls. Uh, that's legal. And that's like, no, yeah, except for these girls were really drunk. Well, so and that's the so thing. being like one of the and I listen, I like to get down. Your girl can drink. Mm -hmm. But I was noticing a lot of very intoxicated women around some very not so intoxicated, Men. older, mm. much older Older to the point where I'm like, are you chaperoning? <laughs> well, so that, that's a, <laughs> like, that's a real men. thing. And yeah. I've noticed that I'm a private bartender as well. I do, bar I like bartend at uh, private events at like celebrity houses and stuff. And I've noticed that a lot. Like that's a big trend is like old men in the industry mm. and these like little like Instagram well, models. Because the girls. old men don't have the game. They probably don't have the looks. They can't get the younger girls. So they, <laughs> they drug these girls. Mm -hmm. It's very, very common. So oh, yeah. yeah, 50 was talking about that, how it's it's been known that that is a strategy of theirs where they will drug these girls and men. And both <laughs> men and women will wake up the next day like- What the hell happened? Feeling yeah. like taking advantage. And it's just like, they don't even remember. Mm -hmm. Is that is that for you girls? I mean, because we're men. We don't, I don't think I've ever even thought about that. But like, mm -hmm. do you guys fear that? Is that a fear it of yours? Yeah, happens. for sure. I've been drugged before. I was about yeah. to ask you that. You know, you being a bartender as well and working these private events, has anybody ever came at you? Uh, or they say it happens a lot. In the industry, I've been well, like, to you. I've been hit on several times on the job. I've gotten kissed at my job without mm -hmm. being asked before. Whoa, oh that's God. happened. Yeah. Um, cheek or like, no, obviously, straight. no, like kissed on the face. On the face, yeah. How'd you react to that? Okay. Um, oh, so it was at. Did you I don't demand know. That I mean, like, don't get tip. canceled for this. It was at Seth MacFarlane's Christmas party. And I was bartending the event, and some random guy came up to me, and he's like, "I've been seeing you here all night." I'm like, "That's crazy." I'm been staring at literally you. working here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no fucking shit. I've been doing laps, bro. Um, so, <laughs> oh, you noticed? <laughs> so I was just kind of like, "Oh yeah, do you want another like drink or something?" And then he was just like, "No, I want this," and he kissed me, and I was like, "What the fuck?" So oh, I walked back. No. I walked back into like the kitchen area of my uh -huh. job was because I was really good friends with the cooks and the head chef back there mm -hmm. and i was like y'all give me a bowl of noodles i need to just like sit down and process this and then like my with the man the event manager came over to me and she was like you know like what's wrong like is everything okay out there and i was like yeah but this guest kissed me and i'm not going back out there and she was like valid that's cool like it's yeah. almost the end of the night anyways um they were super cool about it they like asked me afterwards too they were like do you need to say something and i was like no but that was just like weird mm -hmm. but things like that definitely do happen like guys just like Maybe it was because he was too drunk or whatever, but, like, people think that they can just, like, do deal with you however they want, right. especially when they've been drinking and, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they just think I, that, like, the world there, is so the they, domain, and it's, right. like, no, um, but... You, you said you've been drugged, though? Yeah, yeah I've well, been drugged before do you as mind well. Yeah. We don't have to, but do you... Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, I was at a party in college, and someone drugged the jungle juice with acid, and oh, everyone was tripping shit. balls. I personally that think... That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was I'm wild, and, like, luckily nothing... Happened like nothing happened oh to me because I was able to like can I made it home. On acid, though? I have no I idea. Think you can. I think you can just you, be like you deemed can, like criminally. You can OD on almost. You can anything. just never be the same after too. People like do like, acid and like gouge their eyes out, but I don't think you can like die from acid itself. I think you have to you like can do probably something. have a bad you trip though and never be the same for sure. That's but I just want to say, I don't know anything <laughs> about that drug. Guys, it is. <laughs> As a man, where's my? Is this my camera right here? Right there. As a man, talk to him, bro. If you're I wouldn't even I wouldn't even call you a man, but you're a little you're, bitch. You're drugging women to get women. You, That's just, the low, just, the low. Just, just step, that was definitely just the step intention your game too. up. Just step your game up. Like work on yourself. Don't do that. Like you're gonna end up in jail. You're gonna end up hurting a woman Innocent yourself. Woman, yeah. It's just not a good idea. It's against the law. It's against 
everything. Morals, just, morals. everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you think just, you have some like creeper men watching this right now? <laughs> Look, um, the opposite. I'm gonna be woman. honest. No, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think I think creeper men. Yeah, will watch it like this. Um, we get some follows that I'll look. I don't know if you look at some of the follows we get. I'll yeah. be like, who the fuck is this guy? Some of them look like regular people too. Like, there you go. Yeah, yep. they know how to blend in and mm-hmm. play yep. the part. Yeah, our age, like, just yep. completely like messed up people. Yeah. Thankfully, you were okay, though. You were fine, and you didn't... So what happened was this guy was trying to flirt with my friend. She had a boyfriend at the time. And so he was, like, talking to her all night, whatever. Me and my friends, we were, like, sophomores in college. We're not drinking age yet. We got invited to this party. Um, and there were several people that I knew there. Um, and so I... We were, we were, like, hanging out, whatever. We're having a good time. My friend's like, hey, we need to go to the bathroom now. All the girls together now. Because it was, like, me and some girls that I lived in the yeah. dorms with. So we go to the bathroom and she's like, we're like, hey, you've been flirting with this guy all night. And she's like, no, I'm not flirting with him. He's talking to me. Mm -hmm. And he showed me this vial. And he was like, and he told me that he drugged the jungle juice. And I was like, what? Me and my other friends, the ones that weren't talking to this strange man. We're like, we're like, we're sophomores. We don't have like, we don't have real IDs. We might get denied from the bars later. We don't, we can't even go buy ourselves a bottle. Like we're taking all the free alcohol we can get. We're at this party. So we're throwing it back. We think that we're just getting drunk. No, ma'am. With Uh. every single like drink like cup that we're drinking we're taking like a dose of acid Fuck. and That's we didn't know crazy. that so like 45 yeah. minutes go by we go so to the acid for it right oh my mm-hmm. God. we go to the bathroom and she's like yeah this guy that i've been talking to he drugged the jungle juice and we're like Fuck. wait you're telling us there's acid this in our one, drinks right now yeah juice? the jungle juice we have in our hands there's a video <laughs> of us on snapchat because the, i have it it's an archive but it's like a video of me and my best friend on snapchat and we're like you're telling me there's acid in these drinks? Like, because we didn't <laughs> uh, believe it. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. So we're like, this party's bad vibes. We're going to go to the bars. So we dip. As soon as we get to the bars, the bouncer takes my fake ID, like, to, like, read it or whatever. And I, like, immediately, like, all do Like, I think I took, like, based on the symptoms that I told people that I had had after the fact, they were like, you got drugged with like at least 10 doses of acid. Oh like that's God. insane. Like what you should not nightmare. feel like that. And I've done, uh, I had done like, you can't die from acid. <laughs> well, I had done acid previously and I've done it since as well. And I've done like a regular dose and it didn't hit as And it as definitely as doesn't do that. Yeah. But what I experienced that night was what were you insane. What were we, you so <laughs> as soon as the bouncer took my ID is his when face, it all hit me. And I was melted. like, give me that back. I snatch it back. And I just remember <laughs> running through the woods at a certain point. Oh, shit. And then I woke but I woke up and I was in my dorm room and I was completely naked. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck? Like what how did I get here? Like, thank God I made it home safe. The my um friend from across the hall, she knocks on the door. She's also completely naked. She's like, dude, how did we get home? And I'm did like, you run through the woods. I'm like, I you didn't even, I'm, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, did you run through the woods? Because I ran through the woods. And she was like, No, I just I wa- I started I to feel here. it, <laughs> so I walked home and I was like, okay, that was smart. And then she's like, um, she's also like tripping too. And then we're like, but where's our Tripping other friend? The next day. This is well. This was like in the middle of the night. Oh, okay. I you, call you my- guys are like sobering up and trying no, to get this we're not. No, together. no, 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 no. We had like blacked out for like a couple hours from the drinking part of it. But when we woke back up, we were in like the midst of like the You're worst trip of our lives. That's crazy. Oh the worship. God, this th- this trip nightmare. lasted eighteen hours. Oh Whoa. yeah, it lasts. Acid it's not supposed to last. Time. It's supposed to last like eight hours. This lasted us like 18 to 20 Nightmare. hours. It was insane. But yeah, no, it was like I felt like my skin was crawling. Every time I closed my eyes, That's I felt crazy. like I was dipping in and out of like different oh dimensions. God. It was wild. I've I, like, never couldn't, done acid. You couldn't have, have clothes done, on. I'm scared. My no, friend, like I my friend who I went to the bars with, she ended up coming back. She made it back to our dorm. And when she got there, I was like, bro, I'm starving, but I can't eat anything. Mm-hmm. I ate an entire box of chicken nuggets frozen because I wanted to feel something. Like it was the, uh, it's the worst thing ever. Frozen, to get to that. That's frozen crazy. still. No, like I she. Frozen. Yeah. yeah. Frozen oh girl. My God. Yeah. I thought she was she like. I was like, dude, are you hungry? No. I'm starving. Like I feel like I've run like sandwich. marathons in the last couple hours. And she was like, yeah, me too. Let's make something to eat. And I was like, I have frozen chicken nuggets and I have barbecue sauce. She was like, How okay, throw it in. <laughs> so I went to go like put them in the microwave. Uh-huh. But then I like tried one frozen and I just, then I ate the it's whole thing. Frozen. And I looked at her and she was like, 
she was like, hey, did you ever make those chicken nuggets? And I was like, no. <laughs> I That's ate crazy, them yo. frozen. Well, at least you ended up safe and frozen chicken nuggets. I've heard worse. It could be way worse. Right. Way it worse. could be so much worse. Yeah. Oh, my C- God. You could have ate a human, for all we know. Exactly. The other day, I, no, hey, it's not some real shit. The other day, I, I saw Florida. a fucking video. They eat humans in Florida. Was it in Florida? No, yeah. there was a video. This I guy see. was eating yeah. uh, somebody's leg from an accident. A car accident I happened. I saw this. You know what I'm talking about, right? Wait, this was in Bakersfield. Was it Bakersfield? Fuck, yes. I used to live there. In yeah, I used to live there. Okay, so that's here. Oh my god. Oh, you might have some raw? of that in you. Nah. Let's not, let's not go. Uh, like shout a, out to the six six one. Like a turkey leg, like, like at a carnival. Yeah, he was eating it like a it turkey leg. Like he's an amusement facility. Train, yes, right? like, yes, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was in Bakersfield. Yeah, so somebody got ran over by the train. Yes, bro, and the fucking. His leg flew out, and there was a oh man that picked God. it up. And Did he think it. it was a turkey leg? I no, I have no idea. Would you guys would? What's well, like the him. weirdest thing that you guys would eat? Shit, I don't know. I don't got the stomach for it. Like, would you? Do you <laughs> the think the weirdest you would ever thing eat? I'd eat? Yeah, like, would you ever Escargo. eat a person? Escargo. I love snail. Per- no, I would. No, sorry. I, maybe if it's normal for someone out there watching to eat people. I would never eat a person. Bro, that's what you say now, babe. Do some acid. Let's see what happens. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to do acid. I'm not going to eat a person. No, babe. Escargot. Escargot. Yeah. I had goat recently. Goat? Oh, goat is delicious. Birria all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's have goat? You had birria? Birria. Yeah, birria. Well, birria. some is beef, some is goat, but the... the I'm yeah, a vegetarian usually, oh. Oh, um, but oh, I was right. at a restaurant that had goat curry, What's and I was like... What's the weirdest plant you've eaten? Or? I actually, I'm not that, not that creative. <laughs> 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 yeah. What's the weirdest thing you you would eat? I don't think I've done anything crazy like that. Um, <laughs> what you've ever you? eaten like bull testicles or anything? Uh, you know what? Oh, okay, like some fear yeah, factor. Here it shit. is. Here it is. Matter of fact, you just brought a memory. You ate some My balls. dad and I uh, back in the days we went to a restaurant in Monterey Park, and Monterey Park it's very dominant um, Asian, mm-hmm. right? But this we went to like an authentic uh, Asian Chinese you ate spot. dog, and. Uh, to the point where the the servers don't even speak English, and the menu is you know in, in, in Chinese, so we just point. We're like, all right, well, we'll have whatever they're eating. They're eating a soup, right? And mm-hmm. it looked good. So whatever we get the food, I'm eating it, shit like that. A, a white couple comes in, and they're they're demanding to get somebody that speaks English. So the the server goes in the back, brings somebody out who kind of knew English. And I just remember them pointing, what are they eating? Like, that looks good. And then the the, the, the lady goes, testicles. And I, <laughs> I looked at her, I'm like, testicles? She's like, you didn't bull, know that's bull what testicles. <laughs> no diddy. Bro, I remember just spitting that shit out of my mouth and I said I didn't eat that. What, testicles uh, from what? What animal? It was a bull. It was a, a bull. Bull, oh, bull okay. testicles. Yeah. yeah. how they taste? Happen. It was crunchy. It was crunchy? For what it lasted. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. But the What's fa- weird I only know what, like, human balls taste like. <laughs> you, uh, what, yeah, what's, what's the weirdest thing y'all eating? Well, are you are you vegan or I'm pescatarian. Pescatarian, there you go. Uh, I what's mean, your favorite this fish? summer I started eating like more. Well, I went to Jordan, which was beautiful. Loved it. Loved what the was people. That loved like? the food. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. I had never been to the Middle East before, but I loved it. Are you Muslim? And no, I, I was. Well, I was raised Catholic. Um, Definitely don't, uh, I definitely don't identify as Catholic anymore. I would say, like, spiritual and kind of, I do, I am, like, on the path of converting to Islam, but I'm still, nice. like, learning more about it. But I had, um, I had goat, I had beef, I had chicken there. Mm-hmm. It's uh, definitely a lot cleaner. It was halal, so. For sure, No yeah. more humanely. Kosher. Killed. Um, I think it's the opposite. And then the. <laughs> Kosher. Mm-hmm. The, the blood no. is drained from the animal, no, so not. you can, like, taste the difference oh, yeah. in the meat. It's a lot more clean. Right, right. Um, I have a lot of friends that are um, uh, Lebanese. Uh, so where I live, there's a restaurant there uh, where it's, like, halal meat. Yeah. And I could taste the difference, like, in their chicken, their cleaner. beef as well. Yeah. Just cleaner, Did you fresher. guys know that, like, in the UK, blue Gatorade is illegal? Yeah, it's a lot of things are like in a right? lot of in a lot of other countries, the stuff that we eat isn't mm. even yep. legal. I thought that like Gatorade was like a hangover or like sickness drink, like something you Gatorade drink to so feel bad better. For you. But it's so much so sugar. bad for you that it's illegal in certain places. That's insane. Or, or yeah. have, so why do you think we, we we have illegal here? Well, well, before that's a good question. But or they have the same product with um, better less, ingredients. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Less ingredients. Less. Yeah, because like the hot Cheetos in other countries, I'm sure. Ketchup too. Mexico. 
I think in mom. America, like, our government is just so, I like, they just want people to be unhealthy, mm-hmm. uh, not in touch with their own mind. Yeah, money Check for this out. Sure. In like, Spain, I have, a fr- uh, have somebody that's out there right now, but there's um, no fat people so far. That they personally what see. what yeah like it's it's very rare <laughs> no very rare to see somebody that's fat out there and they don't open their restaurants to later later in the in well the that's evening. just like a spain thing like they eat dinner at like midnight right yeah. Also, yeah. they also I have nap time do you know that i don't well, know they have a yeah. dedicated time to take <laughs> like between 12 and 2 everybody stop i think Please that's great nap. too yeah. Me too, but I think um, maybe the reason is, like, I think a lot of ingredients in America are not good for us, like, so bad to the point where, like, we're bloated. Mm-hmm. And, like, those ingredients, certain certain foods will stay in your gut mm-hmm. for years. It's funny they say that because... Yeah, it's um, like, um, <laughs> it's like t- put, turning something to, like, the trash dump rather than, like, recycling it. It's, it's like just McDonald's has a statement right there that says, our food... Uh, there's a possibility of you getting cancer from eating our food. For real, like, yeah. I haven't oh. been to McDonald's in Even years. Stores right. in LA, like the some some will have signs, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that say you can get. But yet, well, people like still choose. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like cigarettes when you travel like outside of the oh, U.S. Yeah. They oh my have god! Even in the pictures. U.S. In the U.S., there's a Surgeon General's warning on all tobacco products. No, 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 no. But no, crazy no, but ass pictures. Yes, of yes. Like outside of the U.S., you, they have pictures of like the lungs like, and stuff. Exactly. That's things. crazy. Yes. Mortifying things. Like I did not need to see that. Right, which is great. Would you still buy a pack of cigs I casually? I can go for a cig right now. <laughs> 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 Should we spark up? Bryce said he got him. <laughs> on that note, ladies, I, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think we we've lost track of time, and it's been it's yeah, it's been so fast. <laughs> Anything you guys want to touch on really quickly though? Before we got five minutes here. Cinco minutos, whatever. Okay, you know. what is your yeah? Say sure, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question. Go for it. What is like? So we've talked about like how like you can be like different, accepting and like accommodating in different scenarios with a partner. But what is one thing that you would not that you would just like draw the line at? In a relationship? Yeah. Like, what is, like, your one, like, thing that is just, like, if someone told you this or if you saw this or knew this about somebody, like, nope, can't Deal do breaker. it. Like, automatic mm-hmm. swipe no. You go first on the Shit, I was going to say. You go <laughs> no, I, bro. I hey, hey, it's, it's, it's Marvin. A deal breaker in a relationship. Hmm. Or even just, like, talking to somebody. Like, what's your thing that you're, like, nope, for me, do for it. me, I got one. You got one? You want yeah. me to go first? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. For me, it's always going to be about respect. If 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 I see that this woman does not respect herself, I ask myself how can she respect me? What's um what's disrespecting herself? Like mm-hmm. publicly disrespect to herself, the point where you can uh, just the way she it. dresses. Okay. Um, you know, she's like trying to get attention mm. uh, from other people, things like that. Because that, in my opinion, the only attention that should matter is my own, like the one I'm giving you. Okay, right? if, go if, off, King. Right. So Give her that if attention. I see if I if I see a woman <laughs> that's like just mm. too too like showing too much and shit like that, or um going on rants on IG or, like, social media platforms, putting our business out there, mm, that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. I ain't having mm-hmm. that at all. Yeah, like, yeah. if Amen. you put our business out there, nah. That, to me, that's that's some childish shit that I will never tolerate. Okay. Yeah. You, you lost me there. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would also add on uh, communication um, in the sense of maybe taking too long to communicate certain things. Um, but that's after you get to know somebody a little bit. Like, what's something you could like look at somebody on social media or like on a like on well, a dating so, app well, profile so would that as well, right? Like that would take time. Well, that's like well. you could see that on like an app. You could see that if someone's like Tinder or like Hinge How they app, come out, yeah, yeah, like they're presenting Maybe. themselves through pictures. Mm-hmm. So like, you're talking about like more immediate. Yeah, just like just like face value first have to impression. Be physical then, like what? what no, do it doesn't have. to I be. mean, like lying, for example, that would be my deal breaker. Like someone who just. You can tell they're capping, like, like, look, yeah, you can tell a capper. We said earlier, the big (laughs) backpack and the Supreme, like, come on, like, if you come in dressing like a, like a hype beast, like, you're a cap artist, Mm -hmm. like, come on now. No, I don't think that's fair. What are you flexing for? (laughs) I get what you're saying. I don't agree with that, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Something immediate. I couldn't tell you. I I I just, I just said one. I said two, actually. Do you have one? She just yeah, said it, like, right? Oh, the lying. lying. Like, so how, how, how do you discover or how do you know when a man is, a man is lying? Yeah, I don't know how I you mean, do that like, so fast. For example, my dad was a pathological liar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, literally used to lie about the most random stuff. Mm-hmm. I got uh, a boy that, I grew up with a, with a homie like that. Yeah, you can kind of tell. It's like almost instant. Tell. We'll touch on they that. Just, uh-huh. Like, for example, um, 
my parents, when we lived in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. we had a fish spa where the Garofa fish, they would, like, take the dead skin off your feet. I see that And a lot. so he kind of, like, took care of that, and my mom did, like, uh, other work. And um, he would lie to, he would say, like, the most randomest lies to, like, customers that would come in like he said he was a ironed retire uh, a retired iron worker once he said that he grew up in italy mm. one time he never did any of that like just yeah. random lying to people is just like you're he's mentally trying to build Ill. rapport he was trying yeah. to fit in you can yeah. tell though when someone's it's trying like to fit your mold like when they're saying shit just to mm. like fit the mold that they but think but i think like there's a fine okay. line Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No worries. Uh, but I just think, I don't know, I think lying about that kind of stuff, like weird little details uh, all the time, I think that that's like... What if he was trying to do it to like make more money? Would that be like okay? No? I mean, not... Or would he also lie I think with it's you? Like, with I think it's like... Yeah, like oh, he used okay. to lie about, a, everything. about a lot yeah. of things. Lies like, typically permeate through all... Like if you're a liar, that's going to part of like yeah. into yeah. one yeah. area. Yeah. About things. I think I, I got think. one. Go um, so maybe like not being a good listener. I think that's Ooh, something. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I think if um, not that, you know, I don't want to hear obviously what a woman has to say or anybody else. But I think if I'm trying to say something and then it, you know, just passes them or if it's constantly them speaking and they're not really. You, know, it, it, you can tell that on a you. first date too. Right, like yeah. on a first date, you can tell like who's dominating the conversation if they ask you to like repeat a certain piece of information. I got another one. Times. I got another one. I got another one. So in my early twenties, um, I went out with a girl that didn't have much of an opinion on anything. So mm. it was like, hey, what do you want to? What do you want to do today? Would uh, you like I to? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I feel exactly. That. Yeah, yeah. So another I thing was that. like, what do you want to eat? It was like, and I remember yeah. having a convo with her and be like, hey, by the way, like. I, I'm. I want to hear your opinion. Like, I, please tell me. Do you uh-huh. want to eat this? You right, eat? right, right, right. And and I was like, don't be afraid. Like, maybe you're. Are you thinking that like if you say the wrong thing, I'm not gonna like you? Like, I right. need. I need to know who you are. Yeah, like, what, yeah, what, what's exactly. Your flavor, me, yeah. What's your flavor? What's your personality? Who are you? Your perso- exactly. <laughs> Poor girl. Bless her heart. She was. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. she, I think she was so scared. Her answer was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe she was sweet. shy. I've yeah, had, I've very had. Very sweet. Yeah. You Couldn't. deserve somebody that's sure about themselves. I think right. everybody does. And mm-hmm. I think she it, does as well. It makes things more interesting. Yeah. And I like, I like that you touched on that because I actually dated a girl like that back in high school. Um, a rough. Lasted five it, days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was, it was, more, it was on and off. But, uh, but she okay. was, she was generally just a shy girl, you know, but mm-hmm. little by little as years went on, you know, like she had a, she had a very soft voice as well. So mm-hmm. like if she would say something, I could barely hear her. Uh, but little, you know, she get started getting her confidence, and I'm not gonna take credit for that. But I think, you know, just being able to tell her, like, hey, like it's okay to speak up. Like, yeah, I don't know what type of household she grew up in. I don't uh, know if maybe yeah. she wasn't allowed to speak in the household. But you guys you know, were still really young too, right? So yeah, like yeah. That, I was, we, this was probably like prevalent. sophomore year yeah. of high school. But um, just be being able to f- make her feel comfortable, like, hey, like it's okay to share what you feel or you know express yourself. But uh, I think that's very important as well. Like, I, I like it personally when a woman can come at me and tell me, like, hey, you know what? Um, I think we should do this today. You know, g- give me different ideas or different yeah. different um, uh, perspectives of things. Because if it's, it's nice. always me, like, hey, let's go eat here. Let's go here. It kind of gets boring, you know. But It's, it's nice like, to have someone else in the driver's seat. Or exactly. even, like, putting you on. Like, mm-hmm. I think that, like, putting people, me on game. Yeah, people yeah. that can put me on, like, different places to eat, mm-hmm. different music to listen to, different exactly. YouTube videos I can watch, shows I can watch on TV. Yeah. That is like, oh my God, like now. So deposit into exactly. that friendship relationship that you're building. That's a great way to describe mm-hmm. it as a deposit into like shows, the value of your relationship. It shows that there's a genuine interest there. Of course. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. My, I like that. I like that. My deal breaker, is I think, it? is height. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck, we didn't talk uh, about that. We were let's touch go. on that. No, no, well, let's talk. Let's you know what? We can do it. We can do it. Go for go it. For we it. have yeah. to. This yeah. is something we, like, before y'all came, we're like, yo, we got to ask him about Go ahead, go ahead. Let's so talk this about is, it. This is Why my, is it a deal breaker? This is my relationship philosophy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I wait. think, let me preface all this with, I think I'm going to end up married to a man who's 5'10". Okay. Like, I just see it in my future. I think, like... I just but know that's this. not what you want. No, but so like every yeah, time I if I'm on an app or like if I see someone in person, I'm just like if they're not six one like or more, like it's just <laughs> not gonna work out because this is my philosophy. Mm-hmm. 
if your attitude doesn't match your altitude mm-hmm. when you're speaking to me, Damn. I'm going to disrespect you. Oh, I'm going to disrespect fuck. the fuck out of you. <laughs> because me. why are you why? why are you fucking like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, raising your voice to me, trying to tell me what's what? Like, no, I'm looking but you in your why? eye. Okay, With let, these platform shoes on, <laughs> I'm looking you in your eye. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's talk about it. Why does that, one, why does that matter? And then two, like, a man doesn't choose his height. Mm-hmm. So what, what does the attitude with altitude have to do? I, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I don't, I get what you're saying. I don't <laughs> see how that's fair. Like we don't choose our height. Yeah. True or false? No, you guys don't choose your height. <laughs> so then, but you do choose your attitude. I agree. Yes. So but if so, your, so attitude if your attitude does not match your altitude, we have a problem. Why? <laughs> okay. Because. <laughs> you, you feel yeah. you can no, fade up with him. That's because fine. You listen, can have listen, your preference, I've, I've, but why? I've okay, so listen. I've, I've dated guys that were not that tall that mm-hmm. were I mean and they weren't that short either but um they they if if you're just if you're going to raise your voice to me if you're going to have like an Try opinion about me or like any of any type of control mm-hmm. there's a way to come about it and mm-hmm. I just don't like I think this kind of goes back to maybe like the diva in men these days like I think that they just think that they can talk to you I don't know if you've experienced this at all in like your da- like single dating life oh, like yeah. they just think they can talk to you any type of way and that is oh, not yeah. what I'm here for so okay. unless you're fucking like seven feet tall raising your voice to me telling me what's what I'm not fucking listening and I'm going to give it back <laughs> Back to is you. it a physical thing where you like? Yeah, I oh, think it's the fact okay, that I, I don't have it. to look up to them. Like it's the fact that I'm looking you in your you're eye and you're talking. Of a taller, like, let me look into the camera. Than... If you're talking crazy to me and I'm looking you in your <laughs> eye, like lower your voice <laughs> because it's not going. I will claw your eyes out. <laughs> like watch yourself. So, <laughs> you, so if they're taller than you, what, are you gonna respect them? Like, I do. Like I mean, there's obviously quiet. there's a lot of factors that go into respect. Like uh-huh. uh, like if you talk to someone for long enough, there's a lot of other things you can. You're gonna end up with a five foot five guy. You can grow to. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like in my in my in my in my you're gonna be like he's so sweet. In my karma, what's that? Hey, okay, you're gonna be like he's so sweet though. Look how short he is. He talks to me nice. She gonna pick him up. I just met a five foot seven guy who's just my type. I like the way he's speaking. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. No, yell at me now, baby. I know for sure. I know for sure. Hold on, hold on. I can't see you. Let me pick you up real quick. All right, talk. Daddy. Right, There you go. I know. I know for sure. <laughs> there's a shorter guy yeah. for me that like could make me laugh and checks all my boxes uh, but in my experience dating so far I just feel like if well, so what's the minimum what's the what's the height perfect limit? height for you what what your ideal man like six six one would be perfect six foot or six one guy but I would I would dip down to like five ten five eleven if for the attitude for a was really right. for the mm-hmm. yes for the correct attitude for the guy that like respects me can make me laugh like yeah. all that checks all the boxes I would go dish that it way. out and take it you know because I feel like you're a jokester like you could throw some absolutely. jokes out absolutely like mm-hmm. you got to be able to handle my uh, right 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 like when Nina, the claws come out you got to know when it's you coming. have a man obviously but this height did height matter to you when you i mean i've um my man is definitely a lot taller than me i mean i'm pretty sure well, you're pretty I'm short yeah, yeah yeah so <laughs> you're not five feet tall i thought you were five feet hey me she's tall. a she's a she's me an inch tall. short give her a break give her a break you're almost there you're almost there uh-huh. you could lie and say you're five feet no one would so, know so I like being 4'11". I love being short. Uh, so I never really, like, like yes, for Daddy. me... <laughs> she tells me, she's like, you're like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, I'm not. How tall she are you? Just, I'm like 5'5". Five, 5'5". Five. Five, five. <laughs> she just is so short. <laughs> My, um, whatever this is called, it's off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. I love having a man that's taller than me. My man is mm-hmm. pretty tall. Uh, like, I definitely have to look up. I don't know his... Well, yes, name. King. No, that's, would that's, you that's, guys that's have, a big deal. Would you guys date a girl that's taller than you? That's a good. That's Dang. a funny question. That's a, that, yeah. uh, Actually, I've never been asked. Uh, a, a one, a wise man once think. said, "He said, uh, I climb trees." Nah, I don't think I could. You don't think you could? Like, you couldn't fuck with it, a stallion. Like, with like, the knee? like <laughs> if, if, if she's taller than me with heels, I'm all cool for that, you know. Yeah. But like Kevin Hart and his shorty, nah, I can't do that. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's a huge. Wait, why not? Why not? It's just not. Difference. I don't know. I think it goes back to like what Kay was saying to attitude. Me looking up to. to 
to the woman. Yeah, because like, if hey. someone's coming down at you and talking that shit, it's like okay. I feel like I feel and like, like I want to be dominated a little bit. Yeah. Like I like that. Like I want to be dominated by my man a little bit. So like right. if you're talking your shit to me and you're coming from up there, I'm like he can okay. Still dominate I'll back you. Off. A five yeah. foot seven guy is way stronger than a five foot five. Woman. Honey, I box. Like no. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Those doesn't matter. And even if even if Put I can't her beat in him, a boxing match with a five foot two man. No, I've been there. I've been there. I've done that, and I've won the battle. Ooh. And I've got pictures to prove it. Also, Man. show me the pictures. <laughs> I'm screaming. Shit. Oh, Are we really doing this? Nah. Yeah, we're gonna share these on social media. She's about to put this guy on blast later. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> no, because he used to be our manager. Oh, oh, oh! Are you serious? You ladies, man. Shut the fuck up. Oh. No. You see? I saw I think this. We should end it on that. Yeah. Yeah. We end on that. Yeah. 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 Fuck. Hey, yo, and he's very Girls. egotistic, too. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, took I his ass he, down. He, yeah, he, might, he, he, he might file a lawsuit after this. Yeah. I'm Girls, good. Thank you yeah. to both of you for coming on. We hope you had a good time. Appreciate your guys' perspective. Right. Did you guys have a good time? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you guys were mad chill. This was a lot less, um, there was a lot less friction in the conversation than I thought there was going to be. Yeah, just yeah. based on like other episodes you guys have put out oh maybe that's a sign that you guys just need more women, more women. frequently. Well, that's yeah. more women more yeah. frequently yeah. Like, women are natural nurturers you know maybe that's what we need you're a nurturer too Some, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> just, no, but seriously thank <laughs> you we appreciate the drive it was long hope you had a good time hopefully first of many and yeah. you know uh, Share this in the group chat with the girls. Let them know. Of that, course, yeah. You know, no, you know. we're gonna be like, do y'all see us? Yeah. <laughs> look how cute we look. Let me get the rest Go of your gas girlfriends. It up. In. Yeah, we'll get you guys gassed up in the comments. Thank so you. Thank her you. ass is fat. Her hair looks great. <laughs> <laughs> thank there you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yep. but thank you guys for coming. I know it's been a while. I haven't seen you girls, but it's always good to catch up as well. And much love, two one six Cleveland, Nina. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, Ohio. thank you guys. Happy, happy for you. Caribbean. As well, in your relationship. Thank you. Thank you guys. Seriously, appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Bryce.